On this snowy day, I'm going to show you what's inside of a starter motor and how it works to start your car. Now the starter is usually mounted at the interface between the engine and the transmission where the flywheel is. It is responsible for helping the engine rotate while cranking. Now the starter motor consists of two main components. We've got this section here which is the solenoid and that's responsible for pushing and pulling this gear out to engage with the flex plate or the flywheel. And then we've got the electric motor part that actually turns this to crank the engine over. Now electrically speaking the starter motor is fairly straightforward. You've always got 12 volts that's going to this terminal here and you've got a trigger wire that comes from your key switch. Now when you turn your key to the start position this relay is going to trigger 12 volts here which will send this plunger moving outward. That bridges the contact between this terminal here and this terminal here causing 12 volts to be sent to the starter motor which turns it. And finally the outside of this casing here is grounded and that's how it completes the circuit. Here we have a quick schematic of how the starter system works in your car. From the battery you've got 12 volts that flow directly to the starter solenoid. That is controlled by this starter relay which is controlled by the ignition switch. And then it'll send power over to the solenoid which will activate the starter to turn the flywheel or the flex paint. Now the first thing I'm going to open up is this solenoid. So there's three seven millimeter bolts that I'm going to remove. And now I can pop off the casing here. Now you can see inside of here we've got the plunger. When I push it out, it pushes out this gear here to engage with the flywheel. I'm going to remove this plunger here. Now the plunger is essentially an electromagnet. When you activate 12 volts here, it's going to energize a fuel winding inside of here. That's going to cause the plunger to move downward, pushing that gear out. Now underneath here you have this contact surface and that's going to bridge the contact between this side of the terminal and this side of the terminal allowing the 12 volts from the battery to move through the plunger and into the starter motor so it can turn. And there's a little spring on the inside for the plunger. Now if I unscrew this terminal nut here I should be able to remove this contact on this side here. Now the first major failure point on any starter is actually these contacts here because after a while they can wear down or oxidize and lose contact and then you'll have a no start condition. Next up we've got two bolts on this side here. I believe it or not I got 11 30 second socket to work which is weird because Toyota doesn't usually use Imperial. Now over here we've got two 8 millimeter long bolts that go through the casing that hold the electric motor to this outside case. I'm going to remove that next. And now I'm going to remove the starter halves from each other. And you can see what we have inside. This is cool. So over here you can see you've got the output of your electric motor. It's a small tiny little gear. And then we've got a gear reduction going on here with an idler gear in the middle. And it's got these little bearings on it on the outside. And then we've got your final drive gear. It's got a bearing on this side. And that goes out to the flywheel drive gear which plunges out this way. So if we take a close look, when this plunger is pushing against the drive gear here, if you look slowly you can see how the drive gear actually rotates as it's being pushed out. Well that's actually because there's a helical gear inside of here that's giving it that rotation action as it gets pushed out. So that it helps it to engage with the flywheel or flex plate a little bit easier. Now if I move the drive gear outward you can have a closer look at that helical gear inside of there. Now if I remove this gear here you can see, looks like it's got a plastic inside here and a gear on the outside. Now this plunger is actually pushing down on a little ball inside of here. That's the inside of the shaft and you can see that as I hold this bearing steady against the casing that I can move this back and forth. Now this bearing is pressed onto this shaft so I can't open it up any further. Now there is some sort of a spring mechanism to return the drive wheel when the plunger releases and also some starters have a one-way clutch built in inside of here that only allows the starter to turn the engine in one direction. Here's an overall system diagram of how your starter works. We've got the plunger at the top here where the solenoid is. That moves in and out based on the windings here to engage with the flywheel. Then we've got this contact plate here that'll make the current go all the way through to the DC electric motor allow it to rotate through the principle of electromagnetism output a rotation that goes through a gear reduction before driving the final pinion gear to turn the engine over. So now what's left with the starter motor is just the electric motor part itself. So I'm going to remove these two Phillips screws on the back here. So now if I remove the casing here you can see we've got a bearing on the inside here and that bearing rides up on the outside of this casing here. Now over here we've got the 12 volt line that comes from the solenoid. Now that's going to power this ring on the outside here. And that's going to power this brush over here. As well as this brush here on the opposite side. 
Now on the two quarter sides we've got two other brushes, one over here and one over here that gets grounded out to the case itself. Now your brush is here right up against the armature which turns with the electric motor, if you look closely on the inside there. And I'm going to remove the brushes now. Okay, with the brushes up off of the armature, I'm going to cut this wire here, just to release it. And if you take a closer look at these brushes here, these all have this spiral kind of spring that pushes this brush up against this armature here, so it always maintains contact. And that's where we come to the second most worn out part in any starter motor, it's these brushes. Sometimes these brushes can actually mechanically wear out just due to friction against the armature, and then they'll start losing contact, so then your coil will stop spinning. And you can see that springy action as I push against this brush here. Next up we have the armature itself. You can see that's what that looks like. It's basically a bunch of coils that's wrapped around some magnet kind of material. And then you've got your drive gear on the other end along with a bearing. Now on the inside here you have some more field coils that are stationary. And those are also powered up. Now we all remember from simple mechanics that if you've got a coil that has power running through it from a power source in the presence of a north and a south pole, well it's going to experience a force upward in this direction and downward in this direction causing the coil to actually rotate about this axis. Now essentially how this works, just like any other DC electric motor, you've got these brushes that supply 12 volts on either side here and that's going to contact a set of coils through this contact here and that coil is going to become energized and create an electromagnetic field. Now we've got the fuel coils that are stationary on the inside here and those are also receiving 12 volts which make them into an electromagnet. Now when you've got an electromagnet field in the presence of a magnet, well it's going to create an actual force that will cause this armature to rotate. Now when this armature rotates it's going to lose contact from this brush here but then the next guy is going to get powered up. Well that's going to cause a force in that coil and then it's just going to continuously turn over and over and over and over and over. Now the reason why you've got two negative coils that go to ground is once this turns and attracts to the magnet that it's attracted to, it's not going to want to turn anymore so you've got to reverse that polarity. So when this turns an angle it's actually going to flip to the opposite side and face negative energy and that's going to cause the field to reverse and it to continue rotating and rotating and rotating. Make sure you subscribe if you want to see more videos just like this one.